As they say in journalism, don't bury the lead, and I had to lead with a full strike. If you want to impress your friends with your decimal repeater from Saxony, set it to 1259 and let rip. Hi, welcome to the 1916 Company, and thanks for logging on. If you have any questions about this watch, reach out to tmosso at the 1916company.com. All queries about purchase, pricing, and availability of the Alanka und Zona Zeitwerk Minute Repeater. So the Zeitwerk debuted back in 2009, and as a German watch, immediately won the Aiguido, or Best Picture, at the Swiss Oscars of Watchmaking. In 2011, we got the Zeitwerk striking, which would strike the quarters and the hours, but it was something short of a full minute repeater, so if you are late to the party, you need to bring a better party favor. So in 2015, Longa launched this, the minute repeater, with a decimal strike. So it strikes the hours and then the tens of minutes after the hours rather than the quarters after the hours on a conventional minute repeater. So you get hours, tens, and then minutes after the final tens. So 12.59 is going to be 12, five double strikes, and then nine. The watch is platinum, 44 millimeters in diameter, 44.2, let's be precise, because this is a German watch. It's 14.3 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, 52 millimeters, with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now, the timepiece is massive, but you may remark at just how compact it is given how much is inside. When I say it's massive, I mean it's heavy. The dial is a combination of gold, German silver, and sterling silver. The case is all PT950 platinum, and on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, the feeling of value, I mean inherent tangible value, is immense. Now the watch does fit, but I believe if your wrist is any smaller than 16 centimeters circumference, you're going to want to go with a standard 42 millimeter Zeitwerk, just a little bit smaller. It's not that thick, all things considered, and it does have a fairly sloped bezel, so it will slide underneath the cuff, or most cuffs anyway. Down the barrel, you can see the lugs are right out to the edge, but not quite over the edge of my wrist. And over the top, that always exaggerates the width of the watch, but the lugs are still inboard. Taking a look at the strap, it's a high quality piece, robust, and a choice cut of alligator leather with large rectangular symmetrical scales. That's always a sign of a very fine piece of the hide. It is matte finished. There is some bolstering to give volume. We have a monotone stitch. We have a edge that is folded. You can see on the bottom, calfskin in gray, no crimping, no gouging, a brand new Longa factory strap. We have a pin buckle here. You can see that there's a little bit of a soft facet outboard, Longa branding. You have an elevated bridge. I'll demonstrate what that means. It means that instead of sitting under the buckle, the strap sits in the buckle with the bridge elevated over the flanks so it doesn't build up height on the wrist. And then we have this little retaining bar here because if you have a small wrist like mine, you're going to use the smaller hole or make the smallest hole by punching further inboard. And you know that a tightly strapped watch can tend to get pinned on the pin. So you have this little retaining bar so the strap can't slide all the way down to the base of the pin. You can see inside the buckle, we have a Swiss hallmark. Why is that? Well, we also have the maker's mark of Brogioli, that be. That is a Italian Swiss manufacturer of bracelets, clasps, and buckles. Of course, Longa doesn't make bracelets, clasps, buckles, or cases. And we have here a Centaur stamp, as well as a Swiss hallmark, on the case. Why is that? Centaur is a Swiss case maker associated with Audemars Piguet that is one of three primary suppliers of cases to Lange. Hence, you have a Swiss case, and that's a Swiss St. Bernard head stamped on a German watch. Jumping around to the case flank, you can see like most Lange watches, it uses Gunter Blumlein's famous stepped lug. He wanted the watches to be distinctive when they first debuted in the early 1990s, and the stepped lug was his idea. Not every Lange case has a satin finished mid case band, but this one does, so it appears less sheer and massive. We have a pusher that is used to adjust the activation of the chiming system. So you push it and then it's off to the races. As like a grand sonnerie, it runs off the barrel instead of requiring you to charge a separate strike barrel. So you push it and then it runs off the barrel that drives the time. Now you can see there's a little red dot on the power reserve indicator. The reserve must be beyond that red dot to the right side of your screen in order to run the repeater. And I'll just fire it now. You can see that it's gonna skip some tens of minutes, but you know, Fire it up and you'll see how that little hand actually moves as the repeater is operating.
and you could see the pause as it processed its way past all subsequent hours and 50 minutes to reach the four standalone minutes. Of course, the charismatic jump, one of the most appealing features of this watch. Fun fact, while it is striking, let's say you activate the strike at 12.59 and the seconds hand passes the index, it should jump to one. If it's in the process of striking, it will not allow the time to turn over until the strike is complete because that would damage the watch. And this watch is smart enough, unlike some minute repeater owners, to not attempt to change the time while the strike is in action. So the time could actually jump up to 20 seconds after the true jump from 12.59 to 1 o'clock. And so the hand will be right about here, and then the jump will take place. And it will always sequence the jump after the chime to protect the watch. Now, what you saw earlier demonstrated that if you wish, you can actually stop the seconds, which is a nice feature. The watch has a 36-hour manually wound power reserve, and so it has an up-down power reserve indicator up at the top. If you want to tell your Zeitwerk minute repeater from your Zeitwerk striking at a glance on the repeater, the gongs are inboard of the hammers, and you can see the hammers in steel are beveled on their sides, mirror finished on their tops. The dial itself is made of sterling silver, and then the center part that has the, the bridge of time this is actually made of German silver, but it has a little bit of a nickel anthracite coating, so it's not the exact same tone as the dial. But this is actually part of the movement here, not the dial. And you can see right there, that is a clear sapphire. It is the pivot for the discs that display the minutes. You can see we've got everything from satination to snailing to media blast to actual beveling on this dial. So the degree of finish on this dial is beyond what some autologerie manufacturers will place on movements. Now, taking a quick look at the operation, you can see I'm able to adjust the time forward and backwards as I please. So it's got a quick set mechanism that makes setting and theatrical setting, if you wish to impress your friends, an absolute breeze. So lots to love there. The jumping time system inspired by the five-minute clock at the Semper Opera, which is the opera house in Dresden, not far from where Alangu und Zona is based in the city of Glossuta, Germany. So rotating it over, you can see that this crown is unique to the Zeitwerk. You'll only find it on Zeitwerk models. And then we have a version of the Zeitwerk Jumping Time Remontoir Caliber L043. This is the fifth revision. So you can see L043, that means longa. Work started in 2004, 04. It was the third movement started that year, and five means it's the fifth revision of that movement. It's over 36 millimeters in diameter, so it fills this case back handsomely. The feeling of winding a Zeitwerk is unlike anything else in the business, to be perfectly honest. It's got real power to it. It's a formidable feel. The click is refined, and it's gratifying, but it's also got a lot of resistance. You really get the sense of energizing a mighty machine, which is why the barrel has this freestanding separately anchored bridge. So there's a lot anchoring that massive mainspring, which would probably put your eye out if you ever tried to open the barrel. You can also see on this movement, we have a lot of fine finish, including freehand engraving for the cock that bears the escape wheel, as well as the balance cock, black polishing on its cover, on the swan's neck regulator, and on some of the screws. The note, some of the screws are fired blue and some are polished with what they call poly noir or black polish because you can see how those polished facets all turn black as I angle the watch. 36 hour power reserve, 2.5 hertz beat rate, you can see. Although the swan's neck can be used for fine adjustments, fundamentally, this is a very shock resistant and precise free sprung balance where the timing adjustments are made using the eccentric masses on the rim of the balance. And then inboard of that, you can see an overcoil hairspring to ensure in any position the hairspring will breathe concentrically, allowing an extremely isochronous operation. It is five position adjusted, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. And you can see that we have a remontoir constant force device. So there is a little pinwheel that slows down the transmission of energy from the jump of the minutes. We have the second locking lever, which each minute unlocks and transfers one minute verse of, worth of energy to that blued hairspring that sits between the two superimposed third wheels. Uh, one of the third wheels is attached to the 
drivetrain. The other is attached to the train that powers the fourth wheel, the escape wheel, and the balance. And so that remontoir hairspring between the two third wheels, that is what drives the escapement at 2.5 hertz or 5 beats per second. So this massive mainspring would probably cause knocking and damage if you were to let it drive the balance directly. And with the pulsing of energy, given the jump hour, you would probably have a cyclical and uneven application of power. So it would be both too much and irregular. But with the remontoir, you have a very consistent application of force to the escapement. So whether it's fully wound or almost completely discharged, it's going to maintain constant amplitude, isochronous performance, and allow very fine adjustment. Now, this movement has 771 parts and an extraordinary 93 jewels. You'll also note that the decoration is extravagant. Look at the interior beveling of the bridge over the barrel. Look at the snailing on the top of the barrel. It's more of a solarization than a snailing. You have the same treatment of the wheels and the winding train, and then you could see that their teeth have all been micro-beveled. Difficult to do on tiny recessed steel surfaces. You could see the beveling on both the steel parts of the remontoir assembly and on the edges of the German silver bridges. The German silver bridges are an alloy of nickel, copper, and zinc, with the copper giving them their distinctive champagne hue. It's used to connect the modern Lange to the historic pocket watch manufacturer Alange und Zöne. We have Streifen. They are not going to be called Côte de Genève because we're not in Switzerland. The engraving is freehand with a burin. No engines, no lathes. There's engine turning, which is both very overlapped and concentric. You can see the neatness of it really distinguishing this type of engine turning. And then we have satination on most of the tops of the steel parts. And you can see a golden screw-fixed chaton holding the pivot of the anchor and the remontoir, a nod to the settings used in historic Langa pocket watches, a beautiful watch that exhausts superlatives. And I should mention all of this 30 meters water resistant, but there's really no need to submerge it. This watch is the bee's knees. Reach out to Team Also at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details of this Alanco Unzona decimal striking minute repeater.